Hello everyone and welcome to Robotics and Control Engineering Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, robotics, machine learning, optimization, applied mathematics, etc. In this robot operating system or ROS tutorial we explain how to properly write URDF, Zacro and Lunch robot model files such that the robot simulation can be performed in Gazebo. As a demonstration, here is a simple robot system that we modeled and simulated in Gazebo. We deliberately created a simple robot model in order to demonstrate the basic ideas and not to blur the modeling procedure with too many CAD details. Everything explained in this video tutorial can be generalized to more complex CAD geometries. The URDF or Zacro files describing the geometry are given over here. Here is the Zacro file, here is an addition for Gazebo, and here is a launch file. In this video tutorial you will learn how to write these files from scratch and how to create workspace and packages that will simulate the robotic system in Gazebo. But before I start with the explanations, I would like to make a few important comments. First of all, I need to explain the main motivation for creating this video tutorial. It is true that online you can find a number of video tutorials and books how to load URDF and Zacro files in Gazebo. However, I could not find an up-to-date and complete tutorial on how to do that from scratch. Often books or video tutorials tell to readers or watchers to download the previously written files from GitHub and then to load them. However, these tutorials often do not explain and properly describe a number of important intermediate steps that are necessary to properly load the model in Gazebo. I followed many tutorials that were misleading and that produced errors. In contrast to these tutorials, in the current tutorial that you are watching, I explain how to perform all the steps. That is, I explain how to write the files from scratch, create workspace and catkin packages, and finally how to load the files in Gazebo. Also, since it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. The ROS video tutorial that you are currently watching is self-contained. That is, you don't need to watch other video tutorials in order to understand the material presented in this video tutorial. However, it is still a good idea to watch two other ROS video tutorials be before watching the current video. In the first video tutorial, given over here and whose link is given in the description below, I explain how to model a robotic system in Arvis by using URDF files. In the second video tutorial shown over here, I explain how to use Zacro to speed up and parameterize the modeling process. Okay, let's start. In this ROS tutorial, we will learn how to number one, model a simple robot by using unified robot description format, which is abbreviated as URDF and Zacro. Zacro is a macro language for XML. Then, we will learn how to write a launch file such that the URDF and Zacro models can be interpreted by Gazebo. And finally, we will learn how to load the URDF and Zacro models in Gazebo. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. All the codes that are developed and explained in this video tutorial are available on my GitHub page. A link to the GitHub page is given in the description below this video. The first step is to test the installation of Gazebo and to install the necessary packages. For that purpose, let's start a terminal. And in the terminal, we should type Gazebo. If Gazebo is properly installed, you should see the main Gazebo simulation environment. And here it is. You will see this open world and nothing over here. And if you see that, then congratulations. Gazebo is properly installed 
in your Linux environment. You don't need to separately install Gazebo if you installed ROS. ROS comes with Gazebo. That is, Gazebo comes with ROS. It's also a good idea to verify your current installation and the version of Gazebo by typing. And as you can see over here, I'm using the version 11.11. .11. Also, it's important to mention that I'm using the ROS Noetic version. Okay, let's proceed. Next, we need to install the necessary packages. The first package that we will install is this package. It's called Gazebo ROS package. It's a basically a set of ROS packages that provide the necessary interfaces to simulate a robot by using Gazebo 3D Rigid Body Simulator. Let's install this package. Okay, and as you can see over here, I already installed this package. However, in your case, you will see the progress installation update. Let's continue. The next package that we will install is Gazebo Messages. This package contains piece of code that's used for messages and service data structures that are used to interface ROS with Gazebo. Let's install this package. Next, let's proceed. We need to install this package called Gazebo Plugins. This package contains programs that govern the robot-independent Gazebo plugins for sensors, motors, and dynamic reconfigurable components. Okay, let's clear the window to start from the beginning. And finally, we need to install this package. This package presents controllers to com communicate between ROS and Gazebo. Here it is. The next step is to create a workspace and the Catkin package. And since I explained these steps in my previous video tutorials, I will just briefly go over these steps. First, we need to create the workspace folder and in addition to that folder within that folder we create this source subfolder okay then we need to change our current folder to the newly create workspace folder and in this workspace folder we simply have to write catkin make to create our environment and here is our environment the next step is to source our environment And we need to verify the path. OK, we can see that the path is correct. And the next step is to create the package. We need to change our current folder to the source folder. Here it is. And inside of this folder, we need to create the package. To create the package, we are using this command, catkin create package. The first argument is the name of our package. I call my package robot model package. And over here, I'm specifying the dependencies. The dependencies are sub packages that are included in your packages. And these dependencies usually come from other packages or from ROS standard packages. These packages are Gazebo packages, such as Gazebo messages, Gazebo plugins, Gazebo ROS, Gazebo ROS control and this last package, Mastering ROS Robot Description Package. We have already installed these packages and I already explained the main ideas of these packages. Consequently, let's create the package. Here it is and voila, let's see the result. Here's the folder that contains the package and we are going to create new subfolders in this folder and we are going to edit files. Let's start with robot modeling. However, before you create your model, it's very important to start from a sketch. And here's a sketch of our robotic system. We have, first of all, a base link shown over here. 
and I will call this link as base underscore link then over here we have first link we will call it as first link and finally we have a second link shown over here this is the second link then we have two joints to sketch joints I will simply change the color we have over here first joint and this first joint is a rotational joint we will call it as joint one and we have the second joint shown over here and that joint is a translational joint and we will call it as joint two by using the first joint we can rotate this link first link and by using joint two that is by using the translational joint we can translate second link and that's the basic structure of our robotic system next we will learn how to write urdf and zacro files that define this robot geometry for that purpose we need to change our current working folder that is we need to go to our package folder then inside of this folder we need to create another subfolder the name of this folder should be urdf let's go to that folder and in this folder we will create two files the first file will define our geometry and the second file will add additional parameters that are necessary for loading this model in gazebo consequently let's create the first file Here it is, it's completely empty. Now, in order to make this video tutorial as short as possible, I already created the file and I already defined the complete geometry that's given over here. And I will simply copy and paste pieces of code from this file to our new file and I will explain that code. Over here, we define the basic geometry of our robot system. Let's go back to our sketch. The base link has the length and it has a radius it's a cylinder consequently we need to define the cylinder parameters and over here we define the cylinder parameter the base link length is 0.05 and the base link radius is 0.2 next let's define the first link the first link again is a cylinder it has length and it has a radius the radius and the length and the parameters are given over here the third link is a prismatic element and this link has three dimensions it has length height and width it's given over here that is its 2d projection is given over here okay we do that by simply specifying length height and width next we need to define joint limits and some additional properties and consequently here are the parameters Every limit, every joint has upper and lower limits. For rotational or evolute joints, these limits are given over here. They're simply given in radians. Then, every joint has a limit on the maximum achievable velocity. And over here, I assume for revolute or rotational joints that the maximum velocity is 3.14 radians per second. And over here, we can specify the maximum effort for every link and it's given over here now we do the same thing for the prismatic joint we specify the upper and lower bounds and we specify the velocity and the effort over here i need to add this line and this line will include this file this file defines all the parameters that gazebo needs in order to understand the model i will 
edit, that is, I will create this file after I explain the basic geometry. For the time being, just type this line and later on we will create and we will add this file. Okay. The next step is to de define our base link. So here is the definition of the base link. I will simply copy and paste this definition to my code and I will explain it line by line. Over here we start our link. We call our link base link. Here we define visual properties of our link. Here is the geometry. The cylinder length is defined over here and notice that this parameter is actually defined at the beginning of our script. The same thing is for the radius and that was our geometry. Then we need to specify the origin. The origin is located at 0, 0, 0 and roll, pitch and yaw angles are also 0. Okay, that was our origin, that is our coordinate system. Next, we need to define the collision properties of our link. These collision properties are important when simulating the model in gazebo since we need to detect when a robot hits something. And over here we simply specify the geometry and the geometry is actually a cylinder that's defined over here. And the origin is exactly the origin defined previously. Next, we need to define the dynamics properties of our link. We need to specify the origin, we need to specify the mass, here I assume a mass of 1 kg and over here I specify the entries of the inertia matrix. The inertia matrix is symmetric, the elements of the main diagonal are these elements, IXX, IYY and IZZ and these are the off diagonal elements. Since I don't want to make this video too long and too complicated, I simply assume the mass and I simply assume the elements of the inertia matrix. However, in practice, you would most likely do the following. You will analyze this geometry, then you will find formulas for moments of inertia. That is, you will form the matrix given over here on the basis of the real geometry. And you will also compute the mass based on the density and the volume. And finally, we end our link. That was our first link or base link. Next, we need to define our joint 1. Let's do that. Here is the definition of joint 1. The name of the joint is joint 1 and the type is revolute. Revolute is actually a synonym for rotational joint. And then, we need to specify the parent and the child link. The parent link is obviously the base link and the child link is the first link in the kinematic chain. However, we still didn't define the first link. We will define it over here. However, for the time being, it doesn't matter. Then we need to specify the origin. The origin is actually displaced with respect to our original origin. That is the origin of the first link. And we need to specify this displacement. Let's analyze the graph. We want to place our first origin, that is, the joint of the first joint, over here. Let me just change the color and let me repeat what I said. We want to place the coordinate system of our first joint over here. Here it is. However, our base link coordinate system is placed over here. Consequently, we need to define this translation. And that's precisely what is written over here. We take the base link length and we divide it by 2 and that's the displacement in the z direction. Next, we need to specify the axis of rotation. The axis of rotation of this joint is z-axis, that is our vertical axis. Let's continue. Then we need to specify the effort, velocity, upper and lower limits. And notice that all these values are actually the parameters defined over here. Okay, that was our first joint. Next, we need to define our first link. 
And here is the definition. We'll simply copy and paste the de this definition. The link name is first link. Here is the visual representation of this link. It starts here and ends here. Then we, inside of this visual representation, we need to specify the geometry. It's a cylinder of the length and the radius given by these parameters. And next we need to specify the origin. The origin of this link is defined with respect to the origin of joint one. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. We want this link and its center to be over here. That is, it needs to be displaced from our joint one coordinate system. And this displacement over here is one half of the length of our link. If you set this parameter to zero, that is, if this displacement is zero, you will have this situation. You will have a base link, and then the center of the first link will be placed at the center of joint one coordinate system. And that's precisely what we do over here. We simply offset, actually over here, we simply offset our first link for its half of the length. Then we define the collision parameters. The collision is identical to this block over here. And over here, we define the dynamics of the system. We define our origin, mass value, etc., And as well as the inertia matrix. Next, let's define joint number two. Here's the definition. Here's the joint number two. It's a translational or prismatic joint. And that's precisely what's written over here. Then we need to define its parent and child link. The parent link is obviously the first link and the child link is the second link. Okay, then we need to specify the origin. Where is the origin of this link with respect to joint one coordinate system? Let's analyze that. We want to place the coordinate system of join to over here. This means that we need to displace this coordinate system with respect to the coordinate system of joint one for the length of the link. And that's precisely what is written over here. And then we need to specify the axis of translation. In our case, it's the Y axis. That is, we are translating this link in this or in this direction. Then we need to specify the effort, velocity, lower and upper limits. Okay, let's continue. Next, let's define the second link. Here is definition and I need to simply copy and paste this definition. Let's analyze it. The name of the link is second link. Here's the visual representation of the link. It's a box. Box is defined by width, height, and length. And here is the geometry. Where is the center of this box? The center of the box should be displaced for this amount with respect to the coordinate system of join two. That is, we want to place the coordinate system of link 2 over here. And here is the displacement. The displacement is precisely one half of this distance. And that's what's precisely written over here. Then we define the collision it's simply copy and pasted block given over here and we need to define the inertial element mass and moments of inertia that are just assumed in order to make this video as short as possible and finally we close the link once we close the link we need to close the robot environment consequently over here we need to close everything 
Now, you should always double check that you open and close the environment. The robot environment is actually open over here. The first line of the code that I didn't explain tells to interpreter that this is actually, actually an HTML file. And over here, we are specifying basically that we will be using Zacro. Next, let's save our file and let's close the file. Let's go back to our editor, that is to our terminal, and let's see what happens over here. Okay, here's the file. However, we, have a, we need to add an additional file. This file will define gazebo-related properties of the system. Consequently, we need to create another file. The name of this file will be robot.gazebo. Let's create that file. And I will simply copy and paste the content of this file and I will explain it line by line. Over, over here we are saying that we are using the XML. Then we start a robot environment and we end our robot environment. Then over here we add this plugin Gazebo ROS Control. I will explain this plugin in my future tutorial. For the time being, don't worry about this plugin. Then we need to define the properties of the first link. Gazebo takes all the properties they find in our original geometry file that's shown over here and adds these two properties, actually three properties, for our base link. Consequently, we start Gazebo environment, we close the Gazebo environment, and we specify the reference. The reference is base link. Mu1 and Mu2 are coefficients of friction along the first and second direction. And over here, we specify the color of our link. Similarly, we do that for the first link, for the second link, and finally, we close our robot environment. And that's our file. Let's again go through everything. We have base link and its properties. Then we have first link and its properties. And finally, we have the second link and its properties. And finally, we close the file. And we play, press Control S. Okay, let's close this file and let's go back to our editor. Actually, terminal, let's verify that we have two files and let's open again our original geometry file. Now, note the line that's written over here. So, in our geometry file, we are actually including these parameters from the file robot.gazebo and here's the line that I didn't explain at the beginning of explanation of the geometry file. Now you understand this line perfectly. Don't forget to add that line. Next, we need to create an additional file. This is our launch file that will be used to launch our gazebo and to properly load the geometry model. Consequently, let us go one folder back and over here let us create a folder called launch. Let's go to that folder. Inside of that folder, let's create a new file. And the name of this file is robotzacro.launch. Here it is. And again, I will simply copy and paste the content of this file from the previously defined file and I will explain line by line. So let's see what's happening over here. This is a pretty much standard line that I explained previously. Here we start our launch file and we end our launch file. Over here we are including actually a file from gazebo package. The name of the file is emptyworld.launch. This is a file defining our environment, that is our geometrical environment. If you remember at the beginning of this video, I opened ROS. And when I opened ROS, you had the completely empty environment. And that's exactly empty world. Then we define a few arguments and few parameters that are relevant for the time being. For the most important parameter is this graphic user interface parameter and its value set to true, since we want to show the model. Okay. Over here, it's a very important line. This line actually adds our geometric definition to the launch file and it links it properly. Here is where the geometry is defined and over here, 
we are specifying the relative path. So our geometry, if you remember, is in the URDF folder and the name of the geometry is robot.zacro. Okay, and over here we are linking this geometry. Finally, with this command, we are actually creating our gazebo model. What's happening over here? The node name is given like this. The package is gazebo. The type is defined like this. These are a few other parameters. This parameter is important since we want to output the model on our screen. And here are the arguments. The most important argument is this argument, robot description. And it's under dash parameter. This robot description is exactly the robot description given over here. So here we are telling to Gazebo to use this geometry and we specify the geometry as an alias and the alias is robot description. And here we include the robot description. These two parameters are not very important. This can be an arbitrary name over here. Okay, that was our launch file. Let's save that launch file. Let's close the editor. Let's go back to our terminal. Here's the launch file. Okay, the final step is to launch our model. To launch our model, we need to start raw score. So open a new terminal and start raw score. Here it is. Then let's go back to our original terminal and let's launch our model. We do that by calling ROS launch. We specify the name of the package, robot model package. That's the package we created. And we specify the name of the previously created launch file. Let's do that and let's see the output. Here it is. Take some time. Gazebo is ready. And voila, here's our model. Perfect. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much.